friends. Welcome to Sky House Herbs podcast. I'm Ashley Ellen Voss, a clinical herbalist. And in this space, I share my knowledge and experience with plant medicine to help you on your own journey of healing and transformation. Join me in exploring the ancient wisdom of plant spirit medicine and how it can be used to heal the body, mind, and spirit. We'll talk to experts in the field and share stories from people who've been transformed by powerful plant allies. New episodes are released each Monday, so please subscribe. And now let's explore this mystical world of plant medicine together. Hey everyone, welcome in. Today I am joined by a guest and someone who I've personally worked with, Michelle Brock. Welcome, Michelle. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, you your work um looking at past lives. Um, you called yourself, I you did an interview with my husband on his YouTube channel. Um, and I love that you called yourself a spiritual um, was it archaeologist or um, anthropologist? anthropologist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just think, you know, through reading your book and so much of the work that you do with people, um, I thought it'd be really fun to have you on my channel and talk about past lives, talk about the mind, how we change our mind, because that's something I think me and my my listeners are really interested in, and then talk about plants and intuition a little bit. Um oh. Yeah. How does that sound to you? It sounds like fun. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, so I wanted to share with everyone your book, Who Do You Think You Are? And the tagline, which I think is brilliant, an interactive journey through your past lives into your best future. Yeah. And this book was published by Penguin. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. And, um, you know, one of the things I thought was really unique about your book is that it's interactive. And I, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about like, why did you choose that approach to working with past lives? You know, I really wanted to give people an opportunity to not just read about the concept of past lives, but to actually have their own experiences and, you know, have it be interactive in that I want people to start to train their minds to kind of be more open to you know, past life clues, or maybe this comes from a past life. So it's kind of a different way of thinking. And I walk people kind of through this journey interactively because I wanted it to be, you know, a, an experiential journey and not just something that you read about. Yeah, I really loved that approach because there were so many examples you have like digging deeper as one of like the boxes um, after each chapter that where people can actually go in. And, you know, it felt like almost like when we did our session together, that like you were in the room with me and you're like, you know, hey, Ashley, you know, what did that, ex you know, tell me more about that experience. What did it look like? What did it feel like? And, um, you know, it's kind of, it's nice to have that because, you know, I know not everyone might be able to have an experience sitting with a past life therapist yeah. and doing the work. Oh, I'm so glad that you you felt my my presence in the book because I really did want it to feel like, you know, a, a guided journey, you know, that that I was kind of curating. So I'm glad you felt that because I put a lot of my my spirit and soul into the book as well. So yeah, thank you for recognizing that. Yeah, no, I really felt that. And, you know, just for the listeners, um, I did a past life regression with Michelle uh, several months ago. And it was profound. I think for me, I, I've i always been a believer in past lives, you know, since I was, you know, young enough to learn about them. So, you know, to me, it, it made sense. But the thing that surprised me the most was how my past life, like I was expecting them to be herbalist or like somehow more related to who I am today. And I was so fascinated that some of the past lives that came up were so far from any life I would have imagined. Yeah. Um, and so I was curious, you know, in your experience, because you've been doing past life regressions for a long time, like, is this something that's common? Like, do you, do people often not have what they expect come up in a session? I would say all the time, you know, we, we kind of spend some time talking before we set some intentions. I was kind of like, Ashley, what are you looking to explore? What are you hoping to discover about yourself? And it's never the story that we think it's going to be. It's always related though. So yes, your past lives weren't 
as herbalists, but I think that you can actually find pieces of you know, your personality and who you are today in those various past lives. And so the fact that it is often so surprising in of itself is often a little bit of a lesson because people are like, well, that's not something I would have ever made up about myself or right. Or if it's like a fantasy or projection of some sort, but there's always a, a very clear takeaway. And I think that we have these past lives that represent a variety of experiences and all of us have these complex personalities and parts of ourselves that are repressed and emerge at different times in our life and and gifts and tendencies and hidden powers and talents and so I think that there's always more to explore um so the book really is about exploration of the self on a on a deeper level than you might have access to just with the tools that don't include uh, past lives available to you now. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's true. I think one of the things that you talk a lot about in the book is the future self, right? Like we are going into the past. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Like what, what are the past lives in relationship to who we are and our future selves? Great question. I love it. Yeah, because it is really a book about creating the future. And I use that word creative mind mindfully because the future is not determined, right? I think a lot of people kind of reach out to like, you know, intuitives or psychics or astrologers, like what's going to happen in the future? Well, the future is your, of your choosing, right? Certain things, you know, are definitely meant to happen. There are things that happen that are out of our control, natural disasters, or, you know, obviously the, the actions of others are something that we often can't control. But, but what I want people to focus on is, you know, what they can control, which is often their reaction. So looking back at your past and your past lives, it kind of shows you the map of how you got to be where you are today. The things that worked in the past, the things that you failed at and are back trying trying again, because there's <laughs> there's never ever any end to the amount of lessons that we're either confronted with or have opportunities to learn and grow and and be better beings. That's the point of reincarnation. That's been my experience. So, you know, I think that there are a lot of conversations that were happening collectively as a society about history, about who gets to tell the narrative of history and owning up to the truth about history in order to figure out, well, look at where we are and who do we want to become in the future? So the past is this vast store of wisdom of where we've already been and what we need to know about where we are today. And then once we realize that we're no longer held back by the past or the past is not limiting us, then the future is completely open and can be of our own creation, however we want it to be. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. It's, it's, I love how you're saying that it's both like on an individual level, living into another reality or future, but also collectively, like, yeah, yeah that's, beautiful. I believe that any societal change or collective change has to start with the individual, you know, and that is a ripple effect that we do impact each other. And, you know, I think that obviously the world needs a lot of this right now, <laughs> but um, I really kind of saw the work that I do with past lives as a really powerful way to kind of evolve and grow and change more consciously because if you're just kind of unconsciously doing it it's like spinning your wheels but if you have all of this knowledge of like well in a past life I was stuck in this pattern so I'm going to consciously overcome it you know I've really seen as a life coach my clients change their lives in really profound ways and again the impact that that can make on the community families and the society at large Awesome. Do you have any examples you could share with us from your storehouse of, you know, any clients or experiences where a past life regression that they worked through brought up material that they were able to work on and that helped them move forward in some way? Yeah. So I use this example in my book. Um, in the chapter, I talk about relationships. You know, um, a lot of people have limiting belief systems about relationships, about their worthiness for love, giving and receiving. Um, there was a guy I worked with once who had this pattern, this tendency to find a flaw 
in every single woman that he encountered. And he'd be like, she's gorgeous, but I don't like her toes. Or, you know, <laughs> she she snorts when she laughs. Or, you know, it was just things that like, you know, he would always find some deal breaker. And he was like, you know, I do want to get married. I want to have kids. I want to spend my life with someone. And when he realized that in a past life, he had this wife he loved intensely and she got sick and died. And the loss was a really profound uh, grief for him that permeated not just that life, but he brought a little bit of it into this life. And so his finding flaws with women was his way of keeping love away because he didn't want to have that feeling of loss and grief again. And once he realized that was a past life, he was able to catch himself in that knee jerk, you know, reaction. And he did get married, I think about a year after that. Um, and I, you know, I'm see him on social media. He has like two little girls now. And, you know, I'm sure that his wife has some flaws like we all do, right? <laughs> but he was willing to kind of see that it was him, you know, and his wall. Um, so, and there's a million and one examples of that where, you know, you think it's like, oh, well, he's just too picky or full of himself where, no, it was actually this really deep unconscious fear. He wasn't uncaring about women. He was so deeply caring that he was trying to protect himself. But until he knew that truth himself, he wasn't able to deal with it in a conscious way. So that's actually one of my favorite stories. But I've seen people go on to step into new careers that they didn't feel worthy of, um, you know, start families. Um, I work with a lot of women who are on fertility journeys who have a lot of fears about pregnancy from dying in childbirth in a past life. And once they release that fear, they're able to get pregnant. You know, it's incredible how powerful the mind is, particularly the unconscious in how it can rule our thoughts, our behavior, but also sometimes in a physical way too. So yeah, it's fascinating. Wow. Yeah, actually, that was something that I wanted to talk about too, is the idea of changing our minds. Mm. Because I think this is something that people are becoming more open to, you know, like this idea that, well, number one, that you are not your mind, like your mind, like you are a soul and you have a mind, which is like a tool that you use to think and process and remember things. But this idea that our minds are not static, you know, it's not like, because I've always been afraid of spiders, I will always be in the future afraid of spiders. So, you know, one of the things that, that on this channel I've talked about is like microdosing and working with medicinal mushrooms, both non-entheogenic and entheogenic mushrooms to help rewire the brain, like to help us actually change, change our minds and see new patterns. It sounds like past life work is similar because if you can see a pattern, then you can change your mind going forward. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things I think that is such a profound realization that it creates this instantaneous change is like, wow, I'm not me right? Mm -hmm. Like who, that's why I call my book. Who do you think you are? Like when you look in the mirror and you're like, yeah, that's, that's me. I have blonde hair and blue eyes and right. That realization alone is often a way to kind of open a window to this kind of larger journey that you're on over many lifetimes. And then all of these ways that we identify in this lifetime are actually false identities, mm. right? They're not who you are. You're not your name. You're not your thoughts or your beliefs. So the idea that we're always evolving and changing, and you know, I talk about this in the book too, you don't have to die to have a past life. You have a past life in this life. You can reincarnate any time you want, right? And I love how you bring that up, like changing your mind. It's like, I don't want to be this anymore, right? I don't want to, I see a potential future, a possible future. And based on the path I'm at on, that's not where I want to be. So I can change my mind at any point. And I think that the past life work just gives you a larger perspective. It, it gives you more context to your journey. So it helps you change your mind more mindfully. And I think that you're right. I think that there are many paths. And I think that the plant medicine um, can also be instantaneously profound. I know people that have immediate, like, change their entire point of view from just even, you know, one, you know, microdose or whatever. Um, you know, many paths lead to one truth, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And it doesn't matter 
how you get there. And I think that we're constantly discovering new pathways, new ways. Um, I, I'm such a student of nature and, you know, I know you're a Taurus and I have a Taurus moon. Um, there's never an end to these cycles, right? Like cycles are constantly repeating. Is there a beginning and an end? I don't, I don't believe so. So there's always ways we can grow and be better. And it starts with, like you said, changing our mind, deciding that we don't want to be stuck in this identity and who we want to become is our, of our choosing. Yeah. And I, for me personally, the experience of seeing myself in different bodies, like, oh, I was like a very poor man living in like a rural village without shoes. Like yeah. I never imagined myself in that situation or that body, but, but actually being in that body was even more helpful for me to be like, oh yeah, I'm not this spot. Like this body is just what I'm wearing. It's like my outfit for, for this, this right. lifetime. And, you know, yeah, like the choices I'm making, like when we had our yoga studio in, in DC area, and um, you know, it was like in this one moment, it was like, we need to close the studio. Like our life need, there's a, another path that is now becoming clearer and I have to reorient myself to that. And, um, yeah, I feel like the, in, in my life, yeah, it's like we have different lives within one lifetime, but having that experience of being in a different body is like, that really changes the game. I think. <laughs> yeah, you know, And because it's so tactile, right? Like I, I get people that describe, they're like, I'm a really heavy person in my passive and you can feel the weight of that person or if someone's struggling with a symptom, I mean, you're not feeling the pain, but you can kind of, I get some people that speak differently, like, and they're like, oh, my breathing is labored, right? So a lot of people ask me, they're like, oh, is a past life regression kind of like an out of body experience? It's like, no, it's a very in a body experience, but in a different body, right? So you get to actually feel the humanity and the physicality of that previous persona. So it's kind of taking past lives down out of a cloud somewhere, right? I think a lot of people think of this as an ethereal concept. I know I did reading about it in, you know, my Eastern philosophy class in college. I was like, oh, that's strange. You know, I never personalized it. And so when you have the experience yourself, like again, like where you look different or you're a different gender or you're a different race or ethnicity, or I had my first past life experience, I could actually feel that I wasn't very intelligent. And that was really, really interesting. I worked really hard. I was kind of this like simple guy, you know, and I'm kind of like, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I like pride myself in being like really well read in this life, you know, but that was a, a, a part of me and an experience I had. So we're beings who learn by doing. So we have to learn from all sides. If we all just reincarnate all the time as the same gender with the same body type, the same looks on the same continent with the same skin color, we're only getting a very small slice of the experiences that make up the universal human experience. And that's kind of why I call myself a spiritual anthropologist, because these spiritual experiences that are pan-global, that transcend culture or identity are what interests me the most. And I think that past lives is really a really powerful tool and maybe even the key to discovering that shared humanity that we have that transcends you know, borders or any kind of otherness or divisiveness that we have. So that was part of the timing of writing this book is that I really felt like that was a message that was important, um, you know, and an important conversation that we're having, you know, about how we show up for each other and about how we see each other um, and your side, my side, you know, these are all based on false identities. I love that. Yeah, it is. This is definitely the moment to be stepping outside of ourselves and <laughs> our identities in some ways. So I love that. It is requiring a lot of wisdom and we have past life stores of wisdom. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm encouraging people to do. You've already been old and wise many times. Mm -hmm. What if you can use that wisdom today? Because we need it in the world. Absolutely. That, that leads me to my next question I wanted to talk about, which is, um, plant wisdom hmm. and, um, and intuition. And in your book, I love the way you describe, you call them the Claire's C L A I R apostrophe S and 
in that in in the first chapter with the Claire's, you talk about how we are all intuitive and that there's so many different ways to access our intuition and you know our intuition can help us access our past lives and i was thinking about this as an herbalist because you know for me when i first started studying plant spirit medicine um i would like the plants would like pop into my mind and i would like hear them but it wasn't words it was like i would hear images or like um i would like see the plant in my mind's eye and then i would like, like get messages. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, this is a little strange. And I, I did, you know, until I started working with more people who had similar experiences, I was like, okay, actually, this is pretty common. Like, there's actually a lot of, you know, some people, some, there's a lot of different ways of knowing things and getting that intuitive information. And so you describe the six clairs, and I'm just going to read them. Yeah. And then I want to talk about them a little bit. So there's clairvoyance or inner sight, clairsentience or inner feeling, claircognizance or inner knowing, clairaudience, inner hearing, and that's kind of part of how I, I hear the plants, clairalience or inner smelling, and clairgustance or inner tasting. And, you know, it's so interesting, Michelle, because last night I had this experience. I opened up the, ref I, I've been working with my throat because I've, um, since my dog died and I got really sick, my voice hasn't come back. So I've been struggling with my, my voice. And, um, I started working with a few herbs and last night I opened up the refrigerator and I smelled the herbs I've been taking. And I was like, wait a second, they're not in the refrigerator. They're over on the other counter. I was like, oh, I wonder if, um, the calamus spilled cause I could smell it. And it, I looked at the bottle. It was just sitting there closed. And it was like, I, all of a sudden I was like, oh, this is the clear aliens. I just yep. smelled the herb. It was asking me to take it because I had forgotten to take it that night. Yeah. And I, and, and it was like, it was like, <laughs> it was crazy. I was like, this is yeah. like, ex I had never experienced that before. Um, you know, maybe yeah. if I'm out in the woods, I'll smell an herb and I'll be like, oh, I should go look for it and then I'll find it. But I'm usually like, oh, well, that's because it's probably flowering. But this was like closed bottle. I actually smelled it. Well, um, you had missed your dose. So it was kind of like, Ashley, you know, it's interesting. Um, all of my, you know, shamanic and, and indigenous teachers talk about that plants have spirit and like stones have spirit and right. All things on earth have spirit. And so you're talking about connecting with spirit or, or energy or soul, whatever you want to call it. Right. Mm -hmm. So we all have ways of kind of connecting with energy. And I think a lot of people are like obsessed with like clairvoyance, like that inner sight, like I'm going to open my third eye. Well, what if you're not as much of a clairvoyant person and you're more of a clairsentient gut feeling person where you just kind of know things or feel when something's off? That's the uh, claircognizance, clairsentience. And so, yeah, in this book, I kind of want, you know, obviously recalling past lives is a psychic experience, but so is having a dream yeah. or so is like a, a, a feeling that something's off or you you go in a place and, and the vibe's bad or or you sit on the bus next to somebody and all of a sudden you're in a bad mood, right? Like if you're an empath, you're picking up on that energy. So I do believe, and, and if you're open to it in the same way, because these plant spirits are aware that you're working with them, you have a line of communication with them. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm inviting people to do in this book is to open up a line of communication with your inner self, your higher self, your authentic self, your spirit, your soul, whatever you want to call it. I don't really care. It's the same thing, right? Or if you want to call it your unconscious mind, let's let's approach it scientifically. To me, it doesn't really matter. But once you start to open that line of communication, you start to learn that there's a language and that language can change over time. You know, I talk about um, intuitive abilities as, you know, a little bit more kind of like musical talent or athletic ability, you know, people are talking about like, this psychic was born with a gift. It's like, well, if you need to get your kidney removed, do you go to someone who was born talented at surgery? <laughs> no, right? Like <laughs> you go to someone who's practiced it, you know, hone the skill over time. So when you started working with plants, they were, they're like, oh, we're, we're invited in. 
now we're going to speak to you. And maybe you intuitively, when you're working with somebody, maybe a plant will kind of tell you, this is what this person needs, right? Yeah. So it's a matter of being open to it and willing to learn it. Anybody who's interested enough can learn how to be intuitive. Sometimes it's a matter of getting out of your own way. That can be a personality thing too. Some people are very kind of logically minded or kind of stuck in this uh, maybe rigid thinking. And it's like, well, why do you have good ideas in the shower? You know, <laughs> you just relax a little bit and all of a sudden you're like, oh wait, like I'm, I've tapped into this whole inner world. I believe that's available to anyone. And so part of the um, process of this book is really becoming better friends with your unconscious mind, your inner self, your higher self, your soul, which is the part of you that's reincarnated and lived over thousands of lifetimes, maybe even on, on different places, time periods. Um, so it's a matter of learning how it works for you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and there are plants that can aid that process as well. And, you know, maybe you can even share some of your recommendations for some of these clairs. Like if people are working on, you know, with the book, how to like maybe open up more intuitively, are there any recommendations that you have for specific plants dosing that can kind of help people that are looking to connect with past lives? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think certainly, I think microdosing mushrooms is one way. I know not everyone's open to that. So, you know, that that might not be an option, but even lion's mane, which has zero entheogenic properties has been shown to help with um, neuronal regeneration. So it's actually really good for helping new synapses, um, like, actually be built in the brain and then connect. So lion's mane is one I always tell people to work with if they want to help with cognition or like re-imagining different parts of themselves. Um, I also really like go to cola. That's an herb from India. And it was used by the Brahmins in the ancient temples for meditation. And the reason that they came across it was that they were watching the elephants in the gullies, um, in the jungles, eating these big patches of go-to cola. And we know elephants are very good at having good memory. And mm -hmm. um, they're very wise and very thoughtful creatures. And they have they live very long lives. And mm -hmm. so the Brahmins started using this herb and notice that it actually really enhanced their ability to meditate and sit for long periods of time in deep contemplation. So I That's think, cool. you know, that might be a really good herb to use alongside doing yeah. this work. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Because I, again, there are many pathways. I have some clients that swear by, you know, certain uh, semi-precious stones that, that they feel help open their chakras, right. Or uh, rituals, Palo Santo, sage, you know, that's kind of like a more common one. I do that when I'm opening space, when I'm going to, you know, work with people. And I do it when I'm also closing space, when I'm kind of done working with people. So there's power in ritual um, in that your unconscious mind starts to get primed to like, oh, I'm smelling the Palo Santo. It's time for something important to happen. Right. And so that's something that can also kind of aid you as you, um, are exploring your clairs to kind of ritualize it. I think that that also helps. It, it just trains your unconscious mind that this is a, a an important moment. And eventually, you know, you'll be trained to kind of open more quickly and go more deeply. But again, it's a practice. And I think it's available to anyone who's interested. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And this book where I, I want to just like let people know that this book will help them so much and guide them. And the very last chapter, which is on, um, let me just read the title. It's not who you are, but it's who you can become. And I just feel like the whole trajectory of this book is like helping you live into the person you want to become and to give you more agency to make those types of choices. So where can people find your book? So it's, it's available anywhere you buy books, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, independent bookstores. It's out in the U S and the UK right now. Um, it's being published on May 14th in Australia. Oh. It's going to be in the German language in October, and then it'll be in Portugal, in, in Portuguese in Brazil, um, also in the fall. I don't know the date for that yet, but um, it's available. It's out um, mm -hmm. anywhere you buy books. So, and there's also an audio book as well, which a lot of people are enjoying because there are a lot of meditations in there and a lot of journaling exercises. So 
uh, some people and it's, and I got to narrate the audio oh, book, cool. it's actually nice. my voice. So, um, yeah, a lot of people are enjoying it and I'm, I'm enjoying hearing everyone's feedback from it. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I'll include some links to a few different, I really like bookshop.org where you can yeah. support local bookstores. Um, I'll also include an Amazon link. And then what about people who do, are you still seeing clients and doing past life regressions in I like, am. you know, on zoom, how does that work? I'm still doing private um, passive regressions on Zoom. Um, I'm also in the process of working out some kind of like smaller group, um, you know, courses. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing more webinars over the summer. So if you read the book and you want to have a chance to kind of spend two hours with me and kind of do some exercises one on one. I have an online course that I created, which is um pretty much a virtual private session with me. It's six video modules. I think it's about an hour and a half where I walk you through the whole process. And then there's a full past life regression and there's an intention setting. A lot of people are enjoying that. So if you can't afford the private session, I tried to make that um, more affordable and it's actually working with me. Um, but yeah, I want past life to be past life work to be accessible to everyone everywhere. So uh, I'm in the process of finding new ways to do that. So, oh, wow. I love that. Yeah. I'll include links for our listeners so that they can find all of those different resources. Thank and you. yeah, I, I just, I really appreciate you and the work you're doing and just the vision you have for how this is going to help us, you know, as a global community move through some of the really hard challenges we're facing right now. So thank you so much. And thank you for having me on and for allowing me to share my work and for opening up about your personal experiences with me as well. That's very giving of you. Thank you. Oh, of course. No, it was it was wonderful. And I'm I'm so grateful that you were able to take the time to share your story with our listeners and, and share a little bit about your work in your book. So thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you.